Hello everybody and welcome to the latest issue of Comic Book Gentlemen, your comic book podcast where we discuss the most device, de divisive issues in comic book nerddom. I am uh, Greg, your host, and as always I'm joined by my co-host Dave. Say hi Dave. Hey, how's everybody? Yeah, so today uh, we are going to be discussing an interesting uh, topic. This is definitely a more modern argument uh, compared to m most comic book arguments. Uh, so obviously it's 2020, it's a new decade, but the biggest thing that happened in the previous decade is the advent of superhero movies becoming like the number one movies in the world. Would you disagree with that, Dave? Uh, no, everything is a superhero movie now. Everything's a superhero movie. Even, <laughs> even like not superhero movies are not just superhero movies. I mean, look at Fast and the Furious. It was a movie about cars and now they're basically superheroes. <laughs> so, yeah, basically. Basically. So... So one of the things we wanted to talk to, to you guys about today is the idea of how do you balance the movies with the comic books? So we've, we've pulled some facts here, and, we, and um, this is kind of what we're thinking, right? So since 2007 with Iron Man 1, all the way up to 2019 with, with Endgame, the MCU movies have amassed $22.5 billion in revenue. Like This is a crazy number, probably like one of the most successful franchises in movie history uh this just really shows how integral marvel movies have become in modern pop culture so you have you know not just me and dave who've been reading comic books for 20 plus years you have you know including your mom your grandma knows what a marvel movie is like it's crazy now yeah so now you have the question of okay so you have this massive movie franchise and everybody and their grandma is talking about it so what do you do now with the source material so we we've seen some transitions with the comic books since the MCU's really kicked off. You had like Marvel Now, and you had a couple other things where it's like, okay, we're gonna start transitioning more towards matching the MCU and matching the movies. Yeah. But, but when you actually read them, it's still quite different because you still have um, you still have a, a lot of differences between the comic books and the movies. So my right. question for you, Dave, is mm -hmm. do you think? Marvel should double down and match the comic books more to the movies and try to hit that wider audience? Or do you think the comics should remain just do crazy things and then allow the movies to just take and pick and choose what they, what they feel? What's, what's your opinion on this? Yeah, I, I, I think for, uh, first of all, I, I would say that, um, you've got, uh, <laughs> It's a tough question because, I mean, as a as a comic book enthusiast, as I am, um, you know, one of the most exciting things to see was all of these, uh, you know, these characters that I've been, uh, you know, enjoyed for years up on the screen. You know, starting mm -hmm. with uh, the the old Tobey Maguire Spider Man. It was just, it, it was just for its time spectacular. Uh, it was uh, amazing. Uh, all, all the all the adjectives you would describe uh, uh, most of Spider-Man's comics, and I think from from there it's just gotten better and better and better. As far as matching up the material, I think that they've certainly done bits and pieces. Obviously, they've grabbed little bits out of the comics, uh, you know, taken storylines and kind of crushed them together and mixed them up and 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 put their own uh, their own spin on it to some degree. Uh, but I, you know, me personally, I, I like to keep them them separate. Uh, the, you know, with with the MCU movies being its own, uh, you know, if you want to call it universe, uh, and just keep the comics uh, going the way they have been because they have been, you know, popular uh, and and producing at the at the level they have for years mm -hmm. without the help of movies. So I don't, uh, you know, for me. I, I like keeping the 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 material separate. Uh, to me, it almost felt like the movies when they first started coming out were kind of along the line of almost uh, uh, like the Ultimate Universe. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's it was it was uh, you know like the Ultimate Universe was an attempt to bring in new uh, new fans uh, to the genre, uh, and some of them stuck with the Ultimate Universe. Some of them. Uh, got into the old Ultimate Universe and decided, hey, you know, this is pretty cool. I'm going to go check out some of these other comics. And I think the same things happened with the movies. And you didn't necessarily need to say, oh, I read the Ultimate comic and it matched 
the the regular universe. And I don't think the same thing has to happen with the movies. Uh, my only gripe as a as a comic book fan is I hate when they take a storyline, uh, you know, and they and they they twist it around and they change things to suit, you know, whatever director or whatever writer is is putting this together, uh, and they kind of deviate from what what me as a comic fan was looking forward to. But I mean, for somebody going into the theater to see it for the first time, it's all new, anyways. Yeah. Do you think you can think of an example off the top of your head of that? Um. An example of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, the, the, the ones that stick out the most for me, um, not so much from, uh, you know, a, a MCU standpoint, but the Spider-Man movies, uh, you know, especially the, the second round, uh, the, the amazing Spider-Man, just some of the storylines that they, they, they tried to crush together, like in the second one with Electro and your Green Goblin, and the first, you know, Green Goblin was was Harry Osborn and Harry Osborn kills Gwen Stacy. And like, that is nothing like what you saw in the, the comics. And, and in all honesty, in, in that particular movie, it felt like they just tried to cram as much material <laughs> into a movie <laughs> as they possibly could. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think with the, with the, with these, uh, the, the newer Spider-Man ones, um, you know, I think uh, homecoming uh, and far from home, I think, you know, the, the characters are, are definitely, you know, different. They've been, you know, modernized. You know, I think the explanation, for instance, for the for the vulture and how he has his, you know, how how he has his wings or his suit, um, you know, is a little more modern take, which, you know, obviously makes a little more sense than saying, oh, guy, some guy, you know, sewed some wings onto his arms and has a backpack that lets him, uh, you know, defy gravity. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it makes a little more sense. Uh, but it's just like, it's just small deviations from... Uh, from the comic book, those are okay. But when they start to make major changes, you know, for myself, do I still enjoy the movie? Yes. Uh, but when I go seeing, okay, I, I see a particular character like the Vulture, and I'm, I'm expecting a certain thing out of them, and they've made major changes to that, mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's, it, it kind of rubs myself as a comic book fan the wrong way. Yeah, like they're not showing the respect for the source material. Yeah. Like, I think... Like my, it's kind of like a hard thing to really put a finger on because there are some things like you're saying where it's like they do they did need to be updated they did need to be changed and whatnot but there are definitely things where it's like that's iconic like how can you how can you take yeah. that away from them yeah uh, like I, you know the like the the death of Gwen Stacy was the that was the pinnacle of the the uh, the conflict between Norman Osborn and Peter Parker, Green Goblin, Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. That is that is a moment in 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 you know the the Spider-Verse, if you want to call, that you just don't mess with, because it meant a lot. It built up. It was a lot of years that 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 uh, you know led to that happening, and it was it was you know done at a time where you know you didn't see a huge amount of uh, you know the type of violence that you see now in comic books. Uh, and you have a death of a major character, uh, also the death of a major villain, who both stayed, you know, gone for years. Mm -hmm. And it was very impactful. So to just, you know, just to try to cram it into a movie, just for the sake of cramming it into a movie, um, you know, it really doesn't make any sense to me. I think I think certainly the, the, Marvel, uh, the Marvel Studios, the Marvel movies uh, that they've strung together, ending with, with Endgame, did a better job of that. And and really, uh, for myself, you know, it'd just be nitpicking for the most part, mm -hmm. because they they for the most for the most of the characters they stayed pretty true to the core of who the character is. Yeah, they may have leaned a little bit towards maybe the ultimate universe version. Yeah, but it is a it is a bit of a a bit of a mishmash. Yeah, because like biggest example of that is Nick Fury, where he yes. went from like in the regular yeah. universe, he is not. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, and that's a that's a great point because, you know, he the, when he when he was when he was cast in in that uh, in in that role, it was almost like they went, "Wow, this is really popular. People really like this." Um, obviously, it was it was a uh, it was a big hit in the in the Ultimate uh, Universe as well. Mm -hmm. And then it was almost like they said, "Okay, how do we get rid of the crony old white guy?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the old version. And they wrote a, 
you know, for what was for the most part a horribly crappy uh, miniseries, uh, to basically get him out of the picture, and then all of a sudden he has a illegitimate son that steps in that has the same name. Yeah, and you know, like yeah, just to match the movies. Yeah, just to, just to match the movies. Now, do I actually like? I actually like that character a lot better than the old one myself yeah uh so you know but again it was it was just a shoddily put together job in my opinion to 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 make that transition yeah because i think that's another side of the coin so like earlier we're kind of talking like how the mc movies have kind of adapted the comic books but now we're kind of seeing with how popular the mcu movies the comic books are starting to adopt the MC like the movies more yeah. Like, like there's a lot of examples like like we said earlier. This like Nick Fury is a really big one. Another really big one is Guardians of the Galaxy. Like you look at the original yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, they're nothing like not one, even close. Like not even close. Like you have no. like, the only person that's this like from the original team that's in the movies is the guy with the arrow, which now I can't remember his name. Yeah, who who in Yondi, the comic Yondi. book. Uh, in the comic book, actually had a bow and arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, like not, not a... just a, a whistling, a whistling arrow. Yeah, you know, which you know was cool. I, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a, you know, Guardians is the one, one movie out of all of them that I just kind of went, you know what, I'm having such a good time, I don't care what the hell they're doing with mm. this, uh, and 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 they pulled it off. They did, they did a great job. But I mean, to your point, you know, a lot of the characters changed, mm. and then that rolled into the comic books. So going forward, so here, again, we kind of mentioned this already, like, the MCU movies are massive. They did $22.5 billion in revenue between those 10 years. And then yeah. you look at the comic book side, like, it's still a lot, but compared to the movies, it's it's not as big. Like, the, the comics in that same time period only did $3.65 billion. So it's still $3 yeah. billion, but compared to $22 billion, it's like, you can see why they would want to try to capture the MCU. Because, like, in my mm -hmm. mind the mcu is its own thing but at the same time it's still advertising you know the marvel characters like it's still the yep. same ip yep. and whatnot so like for to sure. me business wise it makes sense for yep. marvel to start adopting a lot from the mcu it's just how far do you think they should go like well yeah i mean i i i definitely think that um something like you know i i don't know if i should be going to the grocery store and seeing a Thor sticker on bananas. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like that to me, I mean, they did the same thing with Star Wars, and this this is, I guess, maybe I've been in a cave for the last little little while, but it just, that just seems to be a Disney thing. It, you know, if they can slap their name on it or slap yeah, their material on it, they will yeah. uh, for the marketing side of things. And and I think from, from a standpoint of the... Um, uh, from the comics, like uh, you know, how do the, how do they handle that going forward? You know, I think if they just if they do it right, they can slowly start to um, uh, shift, say, characters or material in that direction, um, so that it does you know match up. Because obviously, if the if the character on the screen is super popular, like you know, Thor, for instance, was not as popular as he is now, and that's the other thing the movies have done. Like, I mean, before. It was the X Men, uh, you know, Spider Man. Those are the those are the guys that carried the Marvel franchise, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm not dissing anybody that like Captain America or the Fantastic Four or Avengers, but you know, like if they're honest and they take a good look in the mirror, they know the truth. These these titles were not big sellers, comparatively for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, when when they they made that 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 shift and they started with the Iron Man movies, got into Thor, Captain America. Those movies have made those characters, I think, more popular than they ever have been, mm -hmm. right? Which is a good thing. I yeah. mean, even for the comic books, because people are going to go out and go like, "I love the Captain America movie. I never knew I liked that as much as I do." I'm going to go try and read a kind of Captain America comic, mm -hmm. you know. But they are going to find, you know, a, a slight difference in the material that they see from the screen to the comic book. Yeah, which some people may have an issue, like matching that in their brain right because there's gonna be some people yep. who are like oh no i only like chris hemsworth's thor why isn't thor like that now so I, it's kind of like a, a hard thing to like for some people it's definitely gonna be hard to transition to comic books but i like i think it is good that the movies are still bringing people to comics like you definitely still want yep. comics to be their own thing 
So, yeah, I, I mean, I think I think the 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 thing that uh, and Marvel tried doing this um, a while ago, uh, where they tried to go back and on a couple select characters. I know they did, uh, for instance, Spider Man for sure, uh, where they tried to go back and they tried to update his um, basically his his uh, his history, or you know, even even starting with his origin. They tried to update it, and it was, you know, poorly taken and and wasn't very well done. I think John Byrne was the artist uh, at the time, uh, and then shortly after that, I believe, is when they came into the multi, uh, the Ultimate Universe, which was handled a lot better. But I mean, at the same time, you also had better artists, better writers, you know, doing the material, and they just flat out came out and said, "Hey, hey, 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 you know, you old comic book fans, we're not trying to change your stuff. This yeah. is a whole different thing." Yeah, and do you think that? Um the fans like like there's definitely a division between the the original comic book fans and then you got the new fans that are coming in from the yep. movies like there's definitely a division between there do you mm-hmm. think part of the problem is the old fans just hanging on like no this is my captain america how how dare you change it like is that oh, a problem sure. or do you think yeah, that's sure. like no that's just how it is so you shouldn't yeah. be catering to the new people you should be catering to the old people who actually buy comics yeah. that's another issue you kind of have to for Marvel to kind of balance, like they still have to respect the old people, because you ha- you've have you have examples in recent years where they've tried to change things, and then the co- people who actually buy the comics are, why are you changing this? It was good before. Yeah, yeah. I I, I mean I think I think uh, that it's just uh, a bunch of us um, old crotchety uh, comic book fans just uh, you know gripping on to uh, to the material with our death grip, uh, <laughs> not wanting it to change, and and I mean that's always been the struggle with comics from the beginning i mean you know like really how old is spider-man yeah exactly you know like i mean he's he's still in his what 30s i don't even know yeah (laughs) you know uh it's it's they've never done uh you know it's always just been a suspension of belief that that as they moved along that all of a sudden you know peter parker has a you know all of a sudden he he has a cell phone (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> don't, don't whereas he it. never carried one before. Yeah, you know, it, they've had to transition it. And it was just a certain level of just going, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, ignore that and let it let it roll on. Um, but the the material has to advance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think when you make wholesale changes to it, where it impacts th- what came before, mm-hmm. that's where you really start to irritate some of these fans because that's that's what they grew up with. That's what what it is. Um, but to add to it, or you know, like in in some superheroes cases, they try to adjust their powers or make them a little different or give them a new suit. You know, something to change it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, those little you know small details as they move forward. As long as the story's good, uh, you know, obviously the art always plays a factor. Um, that can be done in a, in a way that doesn't irritate anybody. Yeah. Uh, and and allows the uh, you know the older older fans to kind of hold on to their character uh, mm-hmm. while still you know exploring different avenues with that character to make it fresh and new for anybody that's coming in and going hey now I can relate to this character because you know I wasn't around in the 1950s yeah yeah I think it's I think it's important like it's a good balance of like you have to respect the past because there's people who care about the past but yeah you, you still have to move forward and if you don't move forward just get stagnant I think a really good example of this, and we don't talk about DC very often, but was the New 52, no. where they kind of said, like, hey, forget everything in the past, and, you know, we're going to just restart now. And a lot of fans weren't happy about that. Like, there were st- yeah. some good storylines that came out of it, like Aquaman's a def- definite winner in New 52. But then you had a mm-hmm. lot of people who were very unhappy, like, hey, what happened to, you know, Lois and, Cl- uh, and, Lois and Clark and, like, yeah. all that other stuff. So it's, I think it's very important for comic books to, you know, respect the past but s- still move forward. So my yeah, other question, it, oh, go ahead. It, with, with regards to that, I mean, they've always had, and this is the thing that they – that you see them kind of going to now, which has always been my 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 pet peeve, is they have the ultimate excuse because they could just say, "Well, this is a different universe," yeah. right? And and then you know everybody seems to back off a little bit when they do that because they go, "Okay, you know, I'll, I'll give you a chance. Let me see what you're going to do with this," mm-hmm. and they can move forward. But you know, when when they just make a wholesale change with not really any explanation and, and they just try to go forward. Like I say, you know, almost pretend like, oh, this is the way it always has been. Yeah. That's that's where I think you start to lose some of the some of the old fans. The diehards, yeah. 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 
So my other question going forward. So obviously, uh, a lot of the Marvel movies are loosely based off of big storylines from the comics. Like you have Civil yep. War in the movies, and then you have Civil War in the comics. You have Infinity War, and then you have like a bunch of stuff. Like, do you think? So obviously, they're using the comics for ideas. Do you think then that the comics should? do the opposite which is ignore the mcu and just go full out and like throw stuff at the wall see what sticks so like you can kind of use it as a testing ground and then then the mcu can kind of pick and choose what they see as a good storyline and and go forward because like there are definitely storylines that are better in the comics than others like you have like uh like one more day with spider-man versus craven's last time like one's obviously better than the other yeah. so it's like obviously like the movies are gonna go like oh no one more day didn't work let's do you know the other storyline like do you think like in my opinion i think that's what the comic should be for is like a testing ground obviously mm-hmm. that the issue with that is you may alienate some of the some of the newer fans from the movies but at the same time i think it's really good for the health healthiness of the movie franchise to actually have new ideas and expand or the opposite to this would be like hey they should be close together and then the new ideas should be coming from the movies yeah, I, I think um, there, there's a couple couple different things. Like, I, I think the reason why you're seeing a lot of these, um, and they've even branched out now, like into graphic novels. Like, I'm always surprised I'll be watching something and I'll be like, "Oh, this is really good," and then I find out like a week later that it was based off a graphic novel I'd mm-hmm. never heard of. Mm-hmm. You know, and it just seems like this is an unlimited, untapped, <laughs> uh, until recently, um, source material that they can just dive into pull out great things that that you know long-term comic book fans have always said like oh that was a great uh, great storyline or this was a great character they could just pull it out make some tweaks to it and throw it into a movie yeah right and and i don't think uh you know i don't think you would have seen as much of a explosion uh, in in the in the genre, if they were just flat out writing it from scratch, yeah, uh, in the movies, because one of the reasons why people go to see these movies that are like, I know Captain America, I want to see Captain America on on screen, yeah, right. Oh, Winter Soldier, I remember that storyline. I want to see that come come you know come to life. You know the the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh yes, that was awesome. I want to go see that, right? So right away you already have people that know the material even though you've changed it entirely. Uh, well not entirely, but for for large portions of it, you've changed the storyline. People are still looking back on something that was well done in one genre and going, I'm going to go see that no matter what because I I remember that and it was great and I'd love to see it in a movie. So I don't think that's ever going to change. Um, as far as the, the comic book, I think, I think the comic book does that because they obviously they produce comics a hell of a lot faster than, than they do movies. And cheaper. So, and for cheaper. Yeah, and, and, and a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think you are seeing a lot, of, uh, a lot of material that may or may not find its way into a movie at some point. So I think to some degree they're kind of already doing that. It's just they're so flush with old material yeah that it, it may be years before you th- see things but i mean on the other hand they do attack things that are popular now you know like in the infinity war uh with uh with uh thanos's cronies um those guys didn't those guys were not around in the affinity gauntlet yeah they're right? definitely more modern. but they were popular during the more recent infinity run uh so they brought them in mm-hmm Right, so they're kind of mishmashing, and you know, I mean, it's, it's smart. They're 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 in a business like anybody else, and they're trying to find like, okay, what are all the things that are going to hit, so that we can make this as you know popular as as possible, and and obviously generate as much revenue as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Easier said than done, right? But yeah. Yeah. Definitely. definitely <laughs> yeah. Good. So yeah, I think I think the main takeaway from this is, the comics should be a testing ground four new things but you still have to respect you kind of have to find a balance of respecting the past and you know getting that mcu flavor in there to attract the new people yeah like again easier said than done but definitely uh definitely kind of the way people should or comic book writers and artists should be going because i mean like even just like we said like if you just draw your star lord to look like chris pratt like nobody's gonna hate you for that no 
so it's, it's it's pretty easy but then you can still do something crazy that has never been done in the guardians movies and that way you know they have more material to run off of yeah and and i think you know to me i think they've maybe received a little less criticism for i guess lesser known characters yeah that's very true you know so guardians of the galaxy uh you know you ask most people uh, you know, ranking your movies, Guardians of the Galaxy, at least number one, if not number one and two, are, are going to probably filter pretty high at the top of that because it was funny, it was action-packed, it had good characters, uh, it was very goofy, uh, it was great. Like, it, it just, it, it, was a, it was a great movie. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think if you were, like a, like, a hardcore Guardians of the Galaxy fan, you know, you might have went to that movie and gone, like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Right? But the general public, for the most part, like, who the hell are the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, so they're kind of okay with whatever happens. Yeah. Whereas and, on the and, flip, um, flip side, I mean, you saw the, uh, you, yeah, you saw the opposite effect of when they did the Man of Steel. Yeah. Yeah. That's right? They true. tried to update it. Um, you know, I wasn't... Uh, I'm not as as critical to the DC fan, uh, DC movies as as some people have been. I I still enjoy aspects of them, and and you know it's still fun again to see uh, that character up on screen, uh, and especially with the uh, their ability to make movies nowadays with CGI and everything else. It's just it's bigger than life. It's just it's it's huge. Um, but you know there were definite changes. Anybody that's <laughs> ever seen the Christopher Reeves Superman. Uh, Definite changes to to you know the storyline and how things were, mm -hmm. uh, and that Just a couple you know for whatever reason didn't sit too well with people. Yeah, because again, it it didn't hold on to what made Superman so iconic, and it didn't hold on to like his core values. It kind of just yeah. told yeah. his own story. So yeah, yeah, for better or for worse. Yeah. yeah. Right, apparently for worse. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I I just hope moving forward that they they uh, uh, you know continue to build on some of the great characters that are there. I mean, there's always you know rumors of characters showing up in shows and and uh, you know I think it's it's been uh, a lot of fun to see a lot of these characters hit the screen, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're not expecting to see that character uh, and and as they move forward, I hope they even take some characters that they did an atrocious job of making a movie of, such as, you know, one of your favorites in Ghost Rider, yeah. and, and actually do a good, a yeah. good Ghost Rider, um, you know, because it would be great. And I'm very, very interested to see where the TV f uh, format or, or Disney Plus uh, format takes these characters that now instead of, okay, we're going to cram the storyline into a two-hour movie, now i got, like, ten-hour episodes. Yeah. Kind of. Like that's gonna ch that's gonna be a game changer as far as developing um, you know a better understanding of who the character is. But I hope they take that opportunity to say, hey, we have more time, so let's do a deep dive into the villain. Yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be awesome. Because you look at like um, like the Netflix shows like Daredevil and uh, and whatnot. Like Kingpin is that was a great mm. villain. Like he, yeah. he he was menacing. He had a good backstory where you like. We're like, oh man, I can kind of see where he's coming from and whatnot, and definitely, it allowed the writer to really give him a, a his time in the spotlight that he needed. Whereas in the movies, you only have two hours. You got to cram origin story. You got to cram love interest. You got to cram. You don't have time for the villain. The villain's just there to blow something up, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm, and, I'm on you with that. Like I'm, I'm definitely curious to see what happens with the Disney Plus series and and how they. And it's also nice that the Disney Plus series will impact the movies or, or vice versa whereas the netflix stuff was separate which was unfortunate yeah and i think you know they made a good choice with uh, uh with spider-man for instance bringing him in especially with all the movies that have come out in the in, in the last uh, uh the last while uh to just go yeah you guys know uncle ben died yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's just, we don't need let's to show that on. again let's just, yeah let's just, just just move on yeah, you know, like, and and some of the other characters they had to do it a little differently. Like there may not have been people that understood how Captain America got his powers, you know, or how Iron Man developed his suit. Uh, so yeah, you know, you have to do that. But you know, I'm I'm glad they're not going. Okay, well, we made three of these Captain America movies, and now uh, you know, five years later, we're gonna recast Captain America and start it all over again. Yeah. And show it again. Let's show him yeah, again. Show, yeah, just keep beating the beating yeah. the same same horse. Yeah, same thing with Batman. Like if I see pearls yeah. flying through the sky again, like come on, I'm, yeah. I'm good. 
We we got it. We got it. Yeah. We don't need to yeah. We understand. Yeah. He's angry. Yeah. <laughs> it's traumatizing. We get it. Move on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, it just it, it just eats up so much of those movies, mm-hmm, right? Yeah, and is, and I think that's where they were going with the villain a little bit. I mean, if you read comics, in all honesty, a villain shows up in a comic. Uh, even back in the day when these villains were showing up for the first time, they didn't show up and then they go, "Oh, wait a minute, give me fifteen minutes to explain my backstory," <laughs> you yeah, know, about honest. how I came, became you know Doctor Octopus. Yeah, it was just like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. Right. And eventually they got to that point, but they just don't have that luxury with movies uh, to, to, you know, they got to start the the movie. They got to bring in the villain. They got to have that conflict and then they got to deal with the villain and you just don't have a lot of time to go, go into it. I I get why they do it. It's just unfortunate because some of these villains are really good characters Mm -hmm. and you, and you miss, you miss a lot of that, uh, that character development. You might see some of these characters become, you know, huge fan favorites um, because you get that just that little bit more out of them to understand okay exactly who they are. Yeah, yeah, and I mean we we've kind of talked about this before too, where it's like a good story needs a good villain as well. Otherwise, it kind of falls yeah. flat. Like you can you can still have a decent movie and it'll it'll pass and whatnot, but a good villain is what really pushes it over the top. Like you look at yes. Thanos and how he impacted Infinity War. Like if Thanos was just like in the background like he was in 2012 like sitting on a chair nobody would have cared but because he was actually like hey this is my this is my past this is why i'm angry you know people cared more and they cared more about they wanted the hero to beat them and and that type of stuff yeah yeah Yeah, i i think the only thing that i've that i've seen out of out of, of this that i just i i really i really dislike is is there you know the the amalgamation of the of the two things the movies and the comic books is the fact that you'll see a movie coming out like right now and you see black uh, uh black widow coming out and uh you know it looks like a great movie uh there's a couple characters in there that i i honestly never like red guardian i never thought i would see <laughs> in a movie yeah uh which is great but you know you have taskmaster taskmaster is pretty cool they updated the suit it looks kind of neat okay i get it but then all of a sudden oh we got a taskmaster comic book series Mm, yeah like it's just you know those kinds of things i look at and i'm like wow that was just a flat out cash grab yeah like you know because somebody's gonna go see that movie and they're gonna go oh that guy's awesome and then they're gonna go collect this crap comic yeah Uh, that they wrote in like a week yeah yeah, that they just slapped together purposely to 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 get those people that are doing exactly that Mm -hmm. like i don't understand i've seen that before even before taskmaster and whatnot where you had like the prelude to guardians 2 and like prelude to black panther where it was like yeah the the lead up to the movie but it's like but there's so much story that before this anyways like why did you need a prelude why didn't you just tell people hey if you like black panther go read this run as opposed like we released that uh, a good run or something as opposed to just yeah. making an mcu prelude in the comics like that's to me is just even confused more people yeah like is this... and, and i think it's it's you know i think people uh i mean their their reasoning and ex- an excuse for it is is more than likely well you know are you gonna go and grab a bunch of comics that were written in the 70s and <laughs> the 80s and you know, read through all that the source material before you go see the movie. No, you're not going to do that. So you know what? We condensed it down. We updated it. We gave it to you here. Okay, I can. I you know, I can partially understand your thought process there, but let's get real. It's really about just going. Well, why don't we put a comic together and make a little more money? Yeah. yeah. You know, and 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 you know, most of the time, I'm not going to say all the time, but most of the time, they're not very well done. Mm-hmm. They don't have great art and great writers. Uh, they're just like you said, slap together as quick as possible just to get it out there. Yeah, to make sure our marketing is all on the same page type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a, it's definitely a interesting topic because it's like how much business do you want to focus on and how much art do you want to focus on type of thing. So, yeah, in general, so. Yeah, and you know, it's. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock it. I think, I think uh, for for Marvel especially, it has just taken Marvel to a whole new. A whole new level. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the the popularity of the characters. Um, it is just the the new the new way of 
the new way of doing things, especially, you know, it's also capability. I'm sure somebody back in the 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s would have loved to have done an X-Men comic or a movie or a, you know, Avengers movie, but just the capability yeah. of, of doing what you see in a comic book just wasn't even possible. Yeah. Like and, and now, yeah. you know, like, I mean, what do you need uh, Robert Downey Jr. for? Like, you just basically, you know, film his head with a bunch <laughs> of, you know, digital sh- shit showing up around his head. And, yeah. I mean, that's it. You're done. You know, yeah. the, rest, <laughs> the rest of the movie is, is all CGI and, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, not to knock his acting ability, but it, it just, it, you know, it's, it's just changed things so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it's it's a lot easier to do these movies, and in all honesty, we'll probably look back at these movies in ten or twenty years and go, "Oh my God, these were trash." <laughs> as technology advances, yeah. as as it continues to advance, you know, like, yeah. "Oh my God, I can't believe they, they." Oh, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Who was who thought that up? Yeah, yeah. What a what a crazy thing to think. Yeah, like I mean, even a prime example of that is just look at Hulk throughout the years. Like in the seventies, mm-hmm. in order to do the Hulk, you just had to find the biggest guy you could and yep. paint him green. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of green paint and now you can take like mark ruffalo which isn't exactly the most like like muscular guy of all time and it's like hey yeah. no you got this buddy you know <laughs> Just yeah cgi him up yeah and it's it, and it's interesting to say like you bring up a hulk that's that's a great example like somebody might see the avengers movie and be like man i like the incredible hulk i had a i had a friend when i was growing up that just that was he didn't collect any comics except the incredible hulk mm-hmm. that was that was his guy now, if I watched those movies, it was like, wow, this is awesome. I'm, I'm going to go pick up some comics. And they went and picked up the Immortal Hulk. <laughs> they are in for a shock. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But again, but now it's like, but Immortal Hulk is so good. But now mm-hmm. I want to see that on the big screen, even though it's going to be, you know, obviously toned down, but it's like, that's such a cool yeah. storyline to tackle. So it's like yeah. a good example of like kind of what we're saying where it's like, you got to modernize it, but you still got to pay homage to the, to the original. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, obviously if, if they, if they, if they find something on the screen that just makes a character, uh, you know, better in my opinion, my opinion only, um, I thought casting Robert Downey Jr. as uh, Tony Stark was an amazing call. Uh, I, I think his, you know, his the, his type of humor, the way he 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 brought what he brought to the character, I felt kind of made the character better. Mm. And and you see uh, some of that starting to slip into the comic now, which I which I I personally enjoy. And I think you know it's okay to 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 do those kinds of things that just you know um, I guess improve upon something that's already there. Yeah. Uh, you know I don't have a pro- I don't have a problem problem with that. I mean that could have happened even without the movies. You yeah, know you just get a really good artist and a good writer come along and they just do a tiny tweak to 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 the character and and it you know it becomes very popular. Like I find Thor comics now have a lot more. Um, kind of goofier humor in them than they what they used to. Yeah. You know, and that's not such a bad thing. You know, the the concept of the character is still there. There's still it hasn't changed any of the back source material. You can still go back if you want to read the old Thor. You can you can go back and read that stuff. But I mean, you know, like anything, you can't just you know you can't just stay you know stay stay put with what what you've got it's going to constantly be changing and evolving you know or we'd all still be running around with you know apple one phones and <laughs> uh and ipods yeah yeah like things move forward and it's important for the comics to to move forward as well but yeah. again like you just kind of have to keep paying homage to the old stuff yeah so. and I, I think the big question is and I'll, I'll throw this one back to you is is when you get those people that have uh, have uh, I guess come to comic books, become a fan of these characters, and they've come from those two different genre sets. You know, one collected comics, you know, all their life, and that's that's their source material. And you got another one that's, you know, their source material is the movies, and they've watched them fifty times a piece, and they know them in and out. You know, and you get those two together, and you start they start to clash over, you know, what is 
you know, what is it that makes, uh, you know, Iron Man, Iron Man? Mm -hmm. And who is right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just going to be one of those subjective things where, I mean, obviously you have the people who are like, you know, this is the original, this is the original, of course the original is correct. We have the new people where it's like, but it's bad. So why would you want to, why would you want to keep running with the original if it's not as good as the modern? Like, I, I definitely... Mm -hmm. I definitely feel more for the modern stuff where I'm like, yeah, there's a reason why it was updated, but I can see why some older fans would be like, but no, this is how, what I grew up with. This is what, what I like and whatnot. Like even, even me, I'm not, I'm not that old, uh, but even I have issues where it's like, oh, I remember when, you know, Batman, the animated series was out. That was great. That's my favorite Batman. And then you try to read and, and watch Batman now and it just doesn't match up and you're like, but this was so much better. So why didn't you just keep with what you had? And yeah, yeah, I think it's just, it's, it's so subjective. And I think that's, you know, that's just part of comic books and art in general, where it's just like mm -hmm. a lot of, even we can debate this, you know, till the cows come home, but in the end it's subjective and, you know, people are yeah. going to disagree with you no matter what. I yeah. think it's very interesting because like, you know, you had those stereotypical, like in English class, like what did the, what did the author mean when they wrote about blue drapes and whatnot? Like the whole like idea of the meaning of the author and like the meaning of original intent and whatnot. I think mm -hmm. those are always very interesting debates when you consider comic books because comic books have been – it's like a very niche story where it's been written by multiple people but yeah. it, and they ha all have their different takes on it. But it's still supposed to all be canon at the same time. I yeah. think that's something that comics – like only comics really have that situation happen to them. Like I don't know of any other medium that kind of has that. Yeah. Um, and it's a very interesting thing because it's like – you know, so like if if you know one writer's like, oh, Gwen Stacy's the best Spider-Man girlfriend, but then the next author is like, oh no, Mary Jane's the best Spider-Man girlfriend. Like, how do you you know coincide that differences in the in the writing and whatnot? Yeah, and it's I mean I, I've always approached it as this: like, if if you take a character like you know Spider-Man and you you break him down to the to the core, uh, the core is. Okay, basically his powers. Okay, he yeah. sticks to walls. He's got his spidey sense. He's super strong, very agile, jumps all over the place. Um, he was a, he was a smart kind of geeky kid, right? And he made you know these web shooters because he was you know he was into science. And you know you have the Uncle Ben's death that you know taught him responsibility. Okay, as long as you have those core elements there, like I, I really don't have a problem when I go see a movie and. And, and something happens story-wise that's, like, you know, different. That, that you know, I really get her because the character, the heart of the character is still the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can still get behind behind the character, even if you're a little annoyed, okay, that's not how that happened. But, you know, they change it for the movie, whatever. Uh, it's, it is it is what happened. I, I You know, a lot of people had the same problem with the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. You know the the way they brought it out, like you know the Green Goblin looked like a like some kind of giant fiery troll. Yeah. Uh, you know yeah. nothing <laughs> like the like the regular uh, MC universe. Yeah. Um, but it was just it was different. The heart the heart of it was still there. Yeah. And you know it's it's you know you can accept that. I think it's when they make those major changes. Like one of the biggest things about Tobey Maguire's uh, take on Spider Man was the fact that he had natural web shooters. Mm hmm. And people were just like, no, 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 no. Like, you you can't do that. Yeah, because it like, takes th away. Those kind of fundamental changes, I you know, I don't agree with. A story, story's a story. Mm -hmm. You know, every, hell, people can interpret stories differently. So, you know, the story, you can get by. But if you start changing the, the fundamental aspect of the character, I think that's where you start to get into trouble. And I think that for the most part, the MCU has done a good job of, of breaking each of those characters down to those core elements and going, okay, doesn't matter what we do, right? It doesn't matter if we make, you know, Thor Ragnarok and it's just a, a jokey joke, uh, you know, one, one laugh after another. The fundamental, you know, characteristics of Thor have to stay the same, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And, and, you know, you go from there. And I think for the most part, they've done that. And that's what makes them so much more successful than than other iterations. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So I think that's unless you had any final thoughts on this topic, uh, I think that's about it. 
I it, again just looking forward to the the next phase of uh, of movies coming out, uh, so I can immediately leave the theater and <laughs> criticize the hell out of them, and yeah. <laughs> and then go back and watch them and enjoy them a little more after I get yeah. that out of my system. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, looking forward to uh, seeing more and more characters out there, uh, and and you know I think I think at the end of the day. You know, for people to be hating on people because, like, they're a fan of the the movie, uh, you know, adaptation or the cartoon adaptation or the comic book ad- adaptation, like, you know, is again, if you like the character, understand you like the character for those fundamental aspects of that character, and and really at the same, you know, saying that you, you actually like the same thing, you just you just, I guess, in a way, you say it a little differently. Yeah, you just say it angrily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the end, like, it's not bad to have new comic book fans. No. I think that's something that people need to get over. Is like, yeah, sure, they're coming from the movies as opposed to the comics, but they're still fans. You want to nurture that. You don't want to just yell at them and force them, like, to admit them then hate you. Yeah. Like, you want want to nurture this and keep it growing. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, you know, take take that take that uh, that that you know fan that's come from the movies or or even even the animated series and say like, oh you, you oh you like that character, oh you know what, read this this story arc or read this this uh, this even just this one comic, uh, you know, and and sh- you know steer them in the right direction because I mean even even with all of the comics that are out there, I mean I could go through some of my collection and I'm sure I could quite easily pull out. Some incredibly crappily done storylines and and comics that you know uh, if somebody happened to just randomly pick that up they're gonna read it and go oh my god this is awful <laughs> yeah you know Why? Um, who reads you know, comics it's j- crazy just to name a few I mean if you picked up the the the, uh, the clone sag and Spider Man I'm sorry uh, if you <laughs> if you ended up you know getting involved in in my opinion just about anything Dan Slott did mm-hmm. with Spider Man including the the one more day. Uh, you know, again, my my deepest deepest apologies. Uh, you know, you're not getting the Spider-Man that you're that you're used to. But you know, again, the the, the fundamental core aspects are still there. Um, just uh, you know, my only advice would be is just be a little more op- open uh, open minded. Steer those people in the right direction. I don't think there's anybody out there that's like I'm just a comic book fan. I refuse to watch those movies. I don't think you have to worry about that uh, because all of us comic book fans have just dreamed about seeing these characters up on the screen. I guarantee you, most ninety nine point nine percent of them have seen the movies, but not everybody that's seen the movies has read the comics. Yeah. So you know you want it. Uh, you know I would love to see the industry continue. Uh, it's been a part of my life since I was a kid. Uh, I, I certainly shaped the way I see things and, and the way I think about things um, through the, the many, many, many stories. So you know take take the time to have that conversation with the person, steer them in the right direction. Say hey, here's some storylines I enjoyed. You know and and hopefully uh, you know uh, after you get through the initial. Uh, uh, bitter and vile from from the, uh, the the old comic book fan. You know, you can you can sit down and have a reasonable conversation and enjoy the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it turns out they're humans too. You know, who knew? Yeah, yeah who knew? <laughs> who knew? So yeah, thank you everybody for uh, listening and or if you're on YouTube for watching. Uh, feel free to follow us on whatever platform you found us on. We will continue uh, debating some of these topics. And if you have a topic you want us to tackle, feel free to uh, mention it in the comments. We'll check it out and we'll definitely uh, tackle some of the fan suggestion ones. So thank you very much, Dave, for joining me and we'll see you all next time. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, bye.